Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of In The Mix. Actually, today we are going to be doing things a little bit differently, hoping to continue in a different style for In The Mix, kind of making it a little bit more conversational, more inclusive. And today we have an incredible guest, Olivia Klein. Uh, she's currently a student out at the University of Nebraska, and she's also the music director of the radio station out there, KRNU. Olivia, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, coming to you live from Nebraska. Um, used to be out in the New Jersey streets with you guys. Sorry, my dog's being very loud right now. But um, yeah, it's great to be on the show. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for coming on. You were one of the first people who were interested about coming on and talking about music. I mean, back when, back when you were back roaming the streets with us in New Jersey, you and I would always <laughs> talk about music. And I know I remember one of the first conversations about music you had was us talking about the Alabama Shakes. Uh, I knew that was one thing that we both knew about and kind of talked about. And Andrew Proctor was one of the people I also knew who was a fan of the Alabama Shakes. So I'm super excited to have you on. Uh, we actually have a lot to talk about because the day that we are recording this, the Grammy nominations have just come out about a day or two before that we have recorded this. And boy, just like every other year that the Grammys come out, there's a lot to talk about. Many so, things. To yeah. What it, what is... I, give me like one or two things that really surprised you about these Grammy nominations. I thought, and this was like a pleasant surprise for me, but like the Phoebe Bridgers recognition, like she made her way through like a couple of categories mm -hmm. and like, I cannot think of anybody more deserving. Um, she's wonderful. I don't know how familiar familiar you are with her. I, I have gone through Punisher a couple of times. Okay, and yeah. So you're Yodo is on emo. repeat right now. She she is wonderful. Wonderful yes. musically. Um yeah, so she's like really um kind of breaking out into um like a much more popular space, which is really awesome. I'm excited for her. And then um I was really surprised and this was not a pleasant surprise that Leanne Lahavis was nowhere to be seen. Um, she is probably one of my favorite artists. She had an album that came out in July and it was very, not very different, but like much less pro produced than her other stuff. Um, and I thought that was like a good direction for her. And I still think it is, but, um, she was nowhere to be seen, uh, on the list. So I was a little bummed about that. Yeah, I mean, there's, there is plenty on this Grammys nominations list, I think, for many people to be upset about. One thing you and I were talking about before we came on and recorded, uh, just looking at album of the year, one, I don't, both of us don't know how, how, how Harry Styles' album is not on album of the year. Um, yeah. just, just for reference, I'll go through uh, the albums that are here. Uh, first up is Chilombo by Janae Aiko. I think I love Janae Aiko. I think that album is very deserving up there. Um, Black Pumas by Black Pumas is also up there. I haven't listened to a ton of it. It's pretty good, but obviously I can't say fully how much I know. Uh, Everyday Life by Coldplay. Uh, I forgot that Coldplay was a thing, I guess. I, I haven't. Say, I was like, <laughs> I, I guess congrats for still making music, Coldplay. <laughs> yeah, good job, Chris Martin. I, I really haven't. I uh, haven't paid attention to it. Uh, Tommy, one of Tommy's favorite artists, Jacob Collier, has made it on here with The Jesse Volume 3. Um, That's exciting. I haven't listened to much of Jake Collier, but Tommy won't stop talking about him, so I'm sure he's very deserving uh, on I'm this not going to take credit for showing Tommy Jacob Collier, but I might take credit for that. Hey, listen, he's not here to defend himself. Take all the credit you want. <laughs> True. <laughs> I think it's I, you can do whatever you want here. <laughs> uh, continuing on, Women in Music Part 3 by Haim. Uh, have not listened to that. I will probably check it out once we're done here. Yeah, I've heard uh, only like really good things about it and I also haven't listened to much of it. So I'm that's on my like on my short list of things I need to listen to. Looks like we'll definitely both be checking it out. Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa. I mean Dua Lipa is has just had a breakout year this year. I mean she's been up and coming for a couple of years now, but this this album is fantastic. She's very deserving. I would not be surprised if she wins this album, uh album of the year category. And then the next two are the ones that I think you and I have the most uh, questions for. Um, Hollywood's Bleeding by Post Malone. Not for the fact that that album is bad, because it's not. It's also not that, like, it's not a standout album from Post Malone. But, like, it's also so old. It's so old. <laughs> True. <laughs> came, out, came out way too long ago. And then the very bottom, Folklore by Taylor Swift. Yeah. I mean... I think, again, just, like, not a standout album for her. No. Maybe because it's a little different, but, like, 
I think it's, there's one thing to be said of like different in terms of what she's done in the past. Cause that's true. It's yeah. different from what she's done, but is it different and unique in the way where you're like, that is amazing. No, I, I definitely don't think it's, I don't think it's album of the year worthy. Uh, yeah. But you know, that those Swifties really push hard for her. So true. True. I guess that might have something to do with it. The main thing I am just blown away at the fact, where is the weekend? Where is after hours? Mm. why is this not that album is incredible personally that might be my album of the year it's really? so good it's just i i listened to it when it first came out back in the beginning of quarantine mm. uh and then rediscovered it at the end of the summer and have just been listening to it nonstop. i'm yeah. blown away at that fact yeah but overall i mean hey you can't you really can't win them all yeah i guess the next one's next category that we should cover is song of the year I'm like, again, very shocked, like actually shocked that this was on for song of the year. Um, I can't breathe her. Like I listened to it um, during the time that it came out. um, And it was like, very like politically motivated and stuff. And it was just so well done. um, And like really emotional. So I think like it is so deserving to be here. And it's really like refreshing to see that that's like getting the recognition it deserves. I agree. I I think her is fantastic. She is so musically talented and she's so fun to listen to. Have you watched her tiny desk? Uh, No, I think I should though. That sounds incredible. Watch her tiny desk concert. It is like probably one of my favorites. All right. I will definitely have to check that out. Some other, some other standouts on here, (laughs) the box by Roddy Rich. Don't know why that's on song of the year. I guess for the fact that it really blew up on social media is, I mean, it's a catchy song, but it's not like, it's not anything in comparison to I Can't Breathe. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there you can't win them all. So <laughs> there's a couple on here. Black Parade um, yeah. by Beyonce. Very good song. Mm-hmm. Again, another Taylor Swift song, Cardigan. I Can't don't get it. Song, Circles is Cardigan. on here. <laughs> it's, I mean... Personally, I think the the candidates here that can really stand out, um, Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa has a really good chance of winning Song of the Year, I Can't Mm -hmm. Breathe by Her, um, and Black Parade by Beyonce. I think those are really, potentially, potentially Billie Eilish could come in. I I was going to say, we can throw in Billie Eilish, I think. Like, she she puts out some good shit. Like, I won't even lie. Yeah, I mean, she's she's talented, too. Like, uh, radio kind of ruined her and like pop music kind of ruined her for me because she was everywhere and to her credit she deserved to be everywhere because her songs right. were so good I got but a little burnt out on her backwards of mm-hmm. like her trajectory to fame you know what I mean yeah Where she started like uber famous and people sometimes people get turned off if they're like everybody's listening to that person I don't want to I don't think they are good or whatever but um no she definitely deserves to be like recognized everywhere yeah I agree uh, moving on to best new artists, speaking of new artists with Billie Eilish, this list I'm actually very um, impressed with and happy yeah. to see some of the names on here. Like you already said, Phoebe Bridgers coming in for best new artist. I think she's phenomenal. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion is also on here, very deserving of being on this list. You should also check out her Tiny Desk concert, Megan Thee Stallion's. Um, I'm pretty sure it was like the first Tiny Desk concert that they sold tickets for. Really? So like usually it's just like staff members or like mm-hmm. very small group of people because you can hear it like the clapping is like yeah you know at the end of songs <laughs> and you're like oh, how many people are there ten yeah so I think they like sold tickets and had like a concert for Megan Thee Stallions and it is it's fucking awesome very cool very yeah, cool you check that out and then a couple others on there Doja Cat is also on here she really rose to fame um, you know. I don't know if she's our best new artist worthy, but I think personally I would go with Phoebe Bridgers for the best new artist, but I think Megan Thee Stallion is probably going to run away with this one. Probably. Yeah. She's, she's a phenomenal candidate. Uh, Let's see. Are there any other, are there any other groups that you specifically wanted to talk about? Not really. It was just those like big ones to start that I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa there. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I noticed some things to talk about. It's always the top of the categories are, are very interesting. I mean, best, the beginning of the pop section, you have the best solo performance, Yummy by Justin Bieber is in here. Don't know how you can qualify that as like a phenomenal performance. I don't even think you'd call that a song. Like, (laughs) there's like, 
three notes in it. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's more impressive that he was able to continuously write a song. just say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what, mean, are the, what are the lyrics? I'm, I'm it's, honestly. Curious. It's just yummy over and over again for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. Uh, some other really good songs in here, though. We have Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa, Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles, and Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish, and Say So by Doja Cat. So while there is Yummy and Cardigan in that list, you also do have another handful of really phenomenal songs. Definitely. But other than that, I think we're just going to have to see how the uh, Grammys really come out and we see who ends up winning some of these um, awards. Uh, but other than that, I think, frankly, now we should get into the music that you have been listening to, Olivia. So why don't we transition okay. over to your playlist and you can kind of give us a little bit of a rundown of what you have been listening to. For sure. Yeah, I think um, you had mentioned that you were listening to uh, The Weeknd's album in quarantine. And like, there was so much music that I've discovered during quarantine mm -hmm. that will always remind me of that time because of how absurd the world was, the world is, I don't know. But I was like, I feel like music and time is very specific. When you listen to a song at a time in your life or whatever, like it stays with you. And when you hear it again, you're reminded of that. So I was like, what if I made a little month by month playlist? And these are the songs that like, are kind of trademark, like, oh, that was my January period and February and, <laughs> and whatnot. Very so, nice. Um, yeah, we can start with January. Um, I started listening to No Name, if you know who that is. I do. Yeah, she's really, really good. Very, dope. very she's good. A female rapper, um, and she, like, there's no, like, glitz and glam or whatever. Like, she just spits. Like, she is Bars. really good. Yeah, she has bars. Um, so Self is the song of January. Yeah, I think I, I found out No Name in 2018. I remember she came out with a, uh, I want to say an EP during that time. And just, I was so blown away by her vocal performance. She's so, it's calm and, and soothing and you're like just pulled into the words. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know, January, things were looking up. We were in 2020 <laughs> and we thought that was a good thing. And so it's I was true. like... Mm, yeah okay no name just like vibing and then you know everybody falls into their little like seasonal depression he he so february we've got bones by ivy soul and to be honest i didn't know much about that artist i just loved that song mm -hmm. and i just went and looked at some of their other stuff and she's also like a female rapper with like heavy like heavier songs mm -hmm. so that's i think an outlier song for ivy soul but it's very pretty and very just like emotional you know oh i i mistyped up here so moving on to march my birthday month i was so excited turning 21 and i've got texas sun by Krangovin. i never know how to pronounce it do you have any ideas nope i've never okay. even heard of him before Oh, really? Okay, they're more popular than the other two artists, I would say. Or not No Name, but definitely more popular than Ivy Soul. And they've got just kind of like, kind of like a, I don't know, like, I'm so bad at describing music sometimes. But they're just like, this is more of like a driving through the, the streets mm -hmm. and whatnot. But so March is Texas Sun. And that's kind of when everything went to shit and we move into april and we've got unknown mortal orchestra honeybee do you know unknown mortal orchestra i do not but i'm gonna have to check all these people out once we're done here okay so you listen to like tame impala glass animals yep like, i know that's your vibe mm -hmm. you would love unknown mortal orchestra i'm excited to check them out yeah there's some like really good stuff they've got um multi love is a great track honeybee um, we're not in love. We're just high, like just some good bops. Yeah. All right. I'm excited. Yeah. So then we're moving into May and my May song is called Love Stained, but Love Stained by Hope Tala. She's just not super popular, just like a chill indie gal. And I was like, May, sun is shining. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to June where we're like, okay, how are we still locked in our houses? And I started listening to Thundercat, which is just like, crazy he's crazy i it's love good him stuff yeah and i've got oh shit it's x um have you listened to that song specifically i 
have probably heard it in passing because there was a time back in like September when I was checking out Thundercat because a couple of our friends had recommended it. So I was like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, they're good. It's a good time. I'm, I'm, when I'm going through this playlist, making this video, I'm gonna, gonna be listening to it for sure. Yes. That, that one is like super electronic with his like crazy bass, like walking. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just one part where he's like, oh shit, I fucked up. <laughs> like and the whole beat like stops and then like the chorus is i just want a party you should be here so i'm like summertime vibes you know um okay so moving on to july i actually have i can't breathe as my song um i i listened to it so much i thought it was so beautiful like i i also just love her and then august we've got all i need by jacob collier and that one specifically i think was up for a grammy also and that one was like best R&B performance or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, really exciting. That song's really, really good. Probably one of my favorites on the album. Because um, like Jacob can get a little technical with his songs sometimes where you're just like, so much is happening. I can like, it's hard to listen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So this one kind of like strips it all back and it's just like, okay, you're just grooving through this song. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then finishing up with the last three months. Um, this is when school started. September, I've got this song called Easy by Hannah Georges. And I actually discovered her through the music station. Um, th one of the like promoters sent over her track. Um, and this song's just really, really pretty. Uh, and then moving on to one of my favorite albums of the year, not like top, like Grammy worthy, whatever, but it was, um, have you heard of Blue Note? I have. Collective. So they had, like, I think they had, like, so, like, standard musicians, whatever you call them, like, house musicians that did songs with, like, they brought people in mm -hmm. for, to do it. So Georgia Smith did this song called Rose Rouge, and it is fantastic. They do a song with Jordan Rakai. Rakai? I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Rakai. Rakai. Ezra Collective, um, this person, Poppy, I don't know their last name, just like a ton of people who you're like, all of you are so good. This is insane. So um, I'll send you that specific album, but it's called uh, Blue Note Reimagined. It's really good. All right. I'm excited to check it out. Yeah. And then finishing up with November, what I've been listening to this month is De Soleil off of the new Gorillaz album. Which, if you haven't listened to that one, too, it's really good. Yeah, the New Gorillas is really, really good. Yeah. So those are kind of like my 11 songs that trademark this year that I will always remember 2020 through these songs specifically. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, cool. it's, a good, it's a good group of songs. I can definitely see, you know, why you went for these songs during such a tough time, especially... Uh, you know the, the end of spring beginning of summer when multiple different storylines of 2020 were kicking off i mean <laughs> definitely storylines i like that you say that <laughs> yeah the, it's we all know this year's fiction so it's <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> it's not real it's all made up <laughs> but it, it kind of makes it better a yeah. weird... i mean the yeah. killer b storyline could have been more developed but you know for sure they just threw that in yeah it was, fluff. was, just a, like, it was scare fluff. tactic but other than that, I mean, other than this playlist, are, is there any artist or song that you've been listening to recently that you can really, you know, you might want to put people on or you haven't been putting people on? Look really quick. I'm so bad about knowing off the top of my head, like, who I like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, okay, so I, you said earlier before we recorded, you um, like Callie Uchis. Mm -hmm. She just came out with a new album. And it's all, or most of it is in Spanish. Yeah. And it's really interesting. Um, I listened to all of it and I just, it was really well done. I enjoyed it a lot. So that was one that I was like, I didn't know if I'd love it, um, mm -hmm. but I really did. And then not really anybody like super crazy famous that I'm like, oh yeah, I love them. But just like some low key artists, like there's this one girl, uh, Matilda Mann. I've not heard of her. Yeah, she's just like cute, like plays piano and sings like emo love songs. But sometimes you just want to listen to that, you know? Of, absolutely. Why do you think I listen to Joji? I mean, he's not emo <laughs> love songs, but I know. my soulful sad boy that just connects with my soul. I mean, I'm wearing him right now, so it's... <laughs> what else? What else have you been listening to? 
Uh, well, I have been listening to a lot. You know, I've been uh, recrafting the new one shot playlist that I'll be putting out probably next week at some point. Uh, I have been really into her recently. I have found a good amount of her songs um, that I What's enjoy. Uh, I can pull that up for you right now. Just because it's like when you, you know, how you go through some times where you're just like, man, I'm, you know, I'm listening to all the same music. And then you just get one day where you're like, I want to find a bunch of new songs or I want to make a specific playlist for this thing. So that's what I like about the one shot playlist. Mm -hmm. um, so there's two songs I have on this playlist that have her in them. So the first one is BS by Jenna Aiko featuring her. Oh, okay. cool. um, that song is really, really good if you enjoy Jenna Aiko and her gives a phenomenal feature on that. And then her song, A Slide, featuring YG. That mm -hmm. song is, it's just so fun. And I it think is. it's such a good, um, you know, vibe to just, I mean, I'm all about driving and listening to music because I spend so much time in my car. Mm -hmm. um, so like if I have ever, ever have a song that just makes me kind of dance in my seat or makes me feel like everything kind of just time is passing me by, that's yeah. what I'm really a big fan of. But other than that, I mean, Mac Miller has been in heavy rotation for me basically this whole year because mm -hmm. I loved his out his last two albums swimming and circles that came out uh but other than that i've the new omar apollo album which i don't know if you have listened to omar i'm guessing by your action you have uh the song kamikaze so good it yeah. is fuego it is yeah. just so good it's just so fun and bouncy and you're like oh man this is great yes yes i actually have found you? I found Omar Apollo because he was on the new Joji album and I was like, man, I love his voice. And then I found the, the, his new album and it was just, it was like a flip of a switch. I fell in love. Dude, working at the radio station, cause we listen to, or I guess I now listen to like over 20 albums a week. So it's like, I'm always listening to music, but like they sent in Omar Apollo's album and I was like, this is so good. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, like obviously like curating the sound of the station but also like my own personal like rotation is changing and evolving and i'm just finding things like i probably would have never come across um but i'm so glad that i have like omar apollo is oh so good i know he's great well i mean i am so excited to go through and listen to your playlist from top to bottom uh i'm excited to talk to you about the grammys once they you know announce the winners olivia this has been so much fun i i'm sorry that we have not talked more music but we definitely will be in the future oh yeah yeah um, i'll be sending you more music for sure i can't wait i can't wait it's my favorite thing to do i love sharing music it's such a personal connection you can have with people and over the over the media and music that you love so definitely. thank you well, so much me. yeah thanks so much for coming on it was a blast i can't wait for everybody to see this video and to listen to your playlist and to get to know you through your music can't wait Thanks so much, Olivia. Yeah, thanks.